Cody here and today I want to talk to you about a question I keep getting asked. How do I sell my art online? I keep getting this asked on multiple videos, you know, do I make money online? How do you sell art online? Uh, basically, people keep asking these same questions over and over again, so I figured I'd give you a very quick, simplified version of how to sell your art. Now, it's very important to think of the four Ps, um, and I made this up, it might be out somewhere, but I made it, as far as I know, I made it up. But there's there's kind of four Ps to selling your art, all right? So we're gonna go through those individually. So they are the prospect, the product, the platform, and the promotion. So let's start with the prospect. The prospect is the potential buyer. Who is the prospect? Well, essentially, you got to kind of understand, you may not know until you start selling it, but it's a good idea to kind of think about who you're selling to. So personally, a lot of the art I sell goes to people who just want to buy art from someone they know. So like some people kind of looking to support either me as a friend or a family member or as a local artist, right? So they like supporting people that they know. The other people that I tend to sell to are people in homes that aren't rich. Um, they're about middle income, but they buy art to basically make their house look better. Not, I don't know how to explain it, but they, they, buy, the, they buy original art because to them, it's like an investment, right? And it, and it kind of, they can put that up and say, hey, I got this from an artist and it's an original. But I don't tend to sell to a lot of high-end clients, at least not yet, until it, you know, until I become famous one day. But for now, it's it tends to be people who aren't super rich, but they're not broke either. Um, and they like to buy, you know, they buy the art because, you know, something appeals to them. But it's uh, it's not because they're buying it because they have a, a business or because they have a lot of money or because they're just investing in a lot of art. So that's not my target market at this current point. So that's my prospect. It's it's about a middle income person, probably between. I don't know the numbers because I don't want to I don't want to pigeonhole anyone. But anyway, that's who I tend to sell to. Uh, second is the product. So you really have to understand your product okay what is it that you're selling and what makes it unique that you can kind of use that as your springboard okay so I might cover this more in another video but for me it's gloss enamel original abstracts sorry how, how do I say this original gloss enamel abstract art so essentially I don't, I don't sell prints right and I don't sell like photographs of my work I only sell original paintings um, I don't sell, you know, I don't do acrylic or oil. I do gloss enamel. Um, the paintings range in size. Some of them are on paper. Some of them are on canvas. But essentially, it's it's those two surfaces is, is canvas and watercolor paper that gets framed. So that's my product. I know very clearly that gloss enamel paintings is my niche, right? And so I can use that when I sell because it's, a, it's kind of a very unique thing. But even if you do you know, gauche or, or acrylic or oil or whatever, airbrush, maybe you do alcohol ink, it doesn't really matter. Because um, even if there's other people doing it, there's also the the thing that you can use to make kind of your stuff unique is maybe your story or your situation. I know uh, I saw a lady on Instagram that kind of her whole, uh, I don't want to say marketing aspect because it sounds bad, but at the same time, like that's kind of her angle is that she she paints to relieve her depression and she uses that to connect to people. Um, so it's, you know, she, it's her release of selling through her, like that's how she works through her depression and she connects really well with a lot of people. So that's just one suggestion. So it could be, you know, the way that you paint, it could be your technique, it could be the materials, it could be you as a person, your backstory. I mean, there's nothing exciting about me. I'm just a normal guy that paints when I get some free time and then I sell them when I can. And sometimes they sell and that's really cool. But I'm just an average person. So I don't have an exciting backstory. Uh, but I do have a unique uh, thing in that I use gloss enamel as opposed to kind of the more traditional types of paint. Uh, so that's the product. So next let's talk about the platform. The platform is where you actually sell your art and it's important to understand that where you sell your art is going to draw certain types of people. So if I saw on Saatchi art that's 
you know, that can attract high end clients because I mean, those artworks on there for like $10,000. But if I sell on Etsy, it tends to be lower because you might even find expensive paintings on there, but they're usually like maybe a thousand, two thousand. And you could probably sell that same painting on Saatchi Art for 10. And I'm not saying you should because I think you should price your work accordingly. But just keeping that in mind, uh, the platform is really important. So where you sell your art, it, it matters to a lot of degrees. First off, I would recommend at least having your own website. And the reason why I suggest that you have your own website is because that is your, not only is it your domain, so to speak, but you control where the traffic goes from there. So if you have people come to your site, you can control the prices, you can control um, you know, the images, you can control the specials that you run, you can control uh, if you build up an email list that you can you know, send emails to later on. You can control all of that stuff. And without having uh, a website, you can't do any of that. If you just ship people off to Etsy or eBay or Suchyard or Artfinder, any, any platform that isn't yours, you're kind of putting it at the mercy of those platforms. Now, I'm not speaking against them, only making an argument that you can't control where that traffic goes once it gets there. Um, but it doesn't matter. So if you're not comfortable with a website or you don't have one, that's okay. You can still sell. Um, I tend to use Saatchi Art and my own website and not really anything else. Uh, I talked about getting into Artfinder and Zatista. I haven't really had a chance to do that, but I, I plan on at least looking into them. I don't use Etsy or eBay, have not really had good luck with them, um, but that's just, again, that's me. You know, maybe I didn't put enough time or money or something like that. It's totally possible, and it does work for some people, but for the type of people I'm appealing to, those websites just don't work for me. So you gotta understand the platform that you're selling on. I would at least suggest a website. If you're selling smaller items that you can reproduce a lot of or that are probably like under $200, Etsy's probably a great place to go. Uh, but if you're trying to sell much more expensive, high-end ones, uh, probably online gallery type websites like Art, Art Finder, or Zatista. Lastly, let's talk about promotion. How do I promote? How do I sell my art? Social media, I mean, it's very easy right now. We're doing this video. If you haven't seen my channel before, you know, obviously I have videos about art. You see how I make it, and then I talk about, you know, the process. I talk about, you know, just kind of running an art business, even though I don't, I'm not full time, but because I sell it, I, I use that content. So, really, it comes down to two major ones, and it comes down to video and images because art is very um, visual. So if you're selling art, you want to attract people based on the visual aspects of art because essentially you're, people are going to buy that art because of the image. You could describe a painting in a blog post, but it doesn't really do much good. But if you can post photos of it like close-ups or if you can show it like staged on a wall in a room or if you can show the finished product, things like that, those, those are really the only three, but I'll come back in a second. So let's talk about that. So my promotional strategy is just video and image based um, promotion. So I basically use Instagram, Pinterest, um, and YouTube. And those are really the only big three. I use Twitter and Facebook, but I don't, I don't really use them a whole lot. I just kind of use them to promote the stuff I already have out. Um, so really for Instagram, I mean, obviously I post photos of the, of the paintings and then for Pinterest, I pin the, the pictures from my website, um, to Pinterest. Sometimes I do my Instagram as well, um, but not all the time. And then as far as YouTube goes, YouTube is super underrated. And I think that video is only going to take over more, um, in the future as far as like the type of content that we consume. I'm sure text will always be there to some degree, but we're, we're moving to video. And if you can do a video either showcasing your work or showcasing how you made it or showcasing it like in a gallery or some kind of setting where you for people can see it, at least it gives you some kind of edge over people who aren't doing that because then the person that is seeing it, they, they kind of get another angle of it at, that a picture won't show. So, I mean, you could take three separate pictures, right? You could take a, a close-up, a finished, 
and then a staged. And I would recommend those three. Um, but in a video, I mean, I could just, you know, talk about it. Oh, yeah, I made this and my inspiration was that. These are the colors I used. Um, I made it by scraping the paint across, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. That's how I made that painting, you know. So honestly, I mean, you could do a lot of different things. Here's what I would recommend. This or this is what I do. Okay. Again, I use Instagram. I do those three types of pictures and then other stuff in between. But those three. So close-ups finished shots where it's the whole picture or the painting and then staged so on a wall somewhere when I can uh, and then as far as Pinterest goes I just pin the images from my website or from Instagram and then for YouTube I just you know create videos either about the finished piece or the making of it if I can if I film it um, and then that's it so that's what I do you're welcome to do whatever you want, but, you know, again, hopefully maybe that helped uh, to kind of give you an idea of how to sell your art. So, I mean, if you can do those, that's it. I mean, there's that's really it because you can, you, you make your you make your paintings or your, your art, whatever it is. Um, you can film the process if you're comfortable with it. If not, don't film the process. Uh, then you can take that content. So you take the pictures of it. You take, you know, like I said, a close-up, maybe a staged um, maybe, you know, just the finished product with no background. So probably about three photos. If you want, you don't have to, if, if you had to only just choose one, just choose one of the actual product that way you can kind of use it anywhere. Um, or a staged photo. Those are, those are the two good ones. Probably staged is, is a little better just because you can give the person an idea of, of how it will look in their house. But anyway, so you make your product. If you want, you can record it um, up to you. You can use that as content. If not, then you take a picture of it. When it's done, you take that picture, you put it on your website, and then you, you pin that to Pinterest. And then you also take that image, you upload it to Instagram. And then obviously in your bio on Instagram, you link back to your website. And then YouTube, you upload that either that footage or the final product where you kind of showcase it. And then again, you link back to your website. Um, and then if you have time, you can share those links on Facebook and Twitter. That's pretty much it. I don't really think that there's anything else to it. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful and useful. If you did, please like, rate, share, subscribe. All the stuff that all the cool kids do. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.